Hi guys, uh, welcome to Share Analysis. Uh, today's video is about analyzing IPO stocks. So stocks which are listed, uh, which are going to be listed on uh, BSE and NSE needs to uh, offer a initial public offering called IPO. So IPO is offered in a price band like uh, you have a, a lower price and a higher price uh, that is uh, for example like 100 to 110 rupees in between which uh, a buyer can bid for the quantity of shares which are on the issue so coming to the analyzing part of uh, ipo stocks for analyzing ipo stocks guys uh, you need to refer to a document which is a pivotal document for our analysis and uh, for this analysis uh, the document we are referring is red hearing prospectus red hearing prospectus is a document which is submitted to the sebi uh, that is security exchange uh, board of india and uh, they get authorized uh, they check out all the details uh, as per the conditions laid out and then once the approval is done uh, you you allow the company to list on the stock exchange so for this document uh, what is the importance of this document importance of this document is you will be able to uh, get complete uh, <coughs> quantitative and qualitative analysis uh, you can be able to do all the quantitative and qualitative analysis of a company additional to that uh, quantitative and qualitative analysis you also get reports on the sector performance in the country like uh, you can able to gauge how much is the sector growing currently the sector which uh, the company is belonging you can gauge uh, what is the growth prospects in the future and then you will also additionally get reports on how the market is uh, performing and the market dynamics and then you also get the how management is going to deal in future to improve the profits in the company so in drhp it all covers in this document uh, in this document it covers all the things which an investor needs to know about a company remember guys uh, this is a very important video if you are starting on the investment journey you need to watch this video till the end and if you like our content uh, please subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends okay so coming to the uh, document so way to find the document uh, you can uh, log into your uh, <coughs> broker uh, uh, portal or uh, any of the trading portal and uh, as per your broker's uh, portal i have an account with zeroda so i am uh, going to show you how to uh, open the rhp report using zeroda so you can go here once you log in uh, you will find this one on this you click on the orders and then you have an ipo section here so once you go to the ipo section you will find all the stocks which are uh, listed for the ipo which is under process like uh, where you can place the bid right now so today we are doing vprpl uh, vishnu prakash r kungila kunglia limited okay and uh, this is the price band which i was referring to the price band is 94 to 99 so you can uh, bid in between 94 to 99 and your shares gets allotted okay so you can click apply over here once you click apply it will ask are you an individual investor or an employee you can uh, start clicking individual investor <coughs> and then you can see like red hearing prospectus okay red hearing prospectus is this thing once you click on this link a, uh, a file will be loaded uh, it will be downloaded and once you go here you can see like uh, this is a file which is downloaded you can click on this file guys and then you will have a folder like this the first document over here is uh, they this will give you a complete uh, information about how the pricing is achieved like uh, how did they arrive at 94 and 99 rupees what is the valuation method they had uh, taken out uh, the book uh, running managers or the book managers whoever uh, the lead managers whoever uh, uh, filed for listing of this company they give you the methods and the process what they used and why did they arrive at a pricing of 94 to 99 okay then uh, this is a rhp document which is important for us so rhp again i am saying you the it's a very important document uh, to navigate the investment strategy and now uh, rhp full form is red hearing prospectus let's click on this 
I'll just uh, zoom in on this thing. I'll zoom it till 160 might be good. Uh, yeah. Let's zoom. Yeah, this would be good for you. So after opening this document, we need important pieces of uh, information which we need to take from this document, guys. So you can just scroll down. Sorry, this is not the first page. Uh, the first page is here. Yes. So on the first page, the important information I'll be highlighting, guys. And uh, this is a follow through video. So if you want to even get into the important points, you can just watch my video and then follow through it uh, so that it gets uh, memorized in your mind. And uh, tomorrow, if you want to analyze any other IPO stock, you can do it on your self. So coming to the issue size, issue size is important thing here, over here, like what we need to grasp over here, the issue size is over 31 million, that is 31 million 200,000 shares. Okay. Coming down, you have a risk factors, uh, general risk, this is the general risk what they give you, but the risk factors associated with the company and its operations so if there is any risk of payments or uh, any litigations any uh, cases which are uh, uh, taken uh, on the company or any action by someone uh, filing a case on the company company filing case on someone else criminal charges if any would be completely listed in the risk factors so this starts at uh, page number 46 guys okay so you can scroll down over here and then you will be having book running lead managers data these are the people who had uh, evaluated the company and uh, they these are the one who take some uh, benefit out of this uh, listing guys uh, these people ensure that whatever the company is expecting like uh, whatever funds they want to raise through the share market uh, these people uh, get those funds for them for the company and next important point uh, this anchor investor bidding date is not found on each and every rhp report uh, or a document but in this you are finding anchor investment investor so the meaning of anchor investor guys anchor investor is a institutional investing uh, which undertakes uh, shares for more than 10 crore value I, in India, it's minimum value that they need to buy a share quantity which is worth 10 crore rupees on the issue day. So uh, the bidding date, uh, it starts one day before the bidding which is open for the public. So they can uh, bid before one day. If the company is good and the financials are good, they might even bid at a higher quantity. But there is one condition that is like a lock-in period of 31 days from the allotment date. So they can't immediately sell these shares once they bought it. So they need to hold it for 31 days. Once the company is listed and once they pass through that lock-in period, they can sell the shares what they are owning for this company, guys. So this type of anchor investor is uh, invited by the company and the lead managers because whenever the uh, company uh, which is going to be listed is not so famous like uh, many of them might know about Reliance <coughs> but uh, very few of them might heard of Vishnu Prakash uh, even I did not heard of Vishnu Prakash yet so this is a business which is mainly located in Rajasthan and all its activities are happening in Rajasthan so people from other parts of India doesn't even have an idea like what is this company so to gain that confidence of an investor like showing showcasing the confidence so the company brings in anchor investor so that uh, they can publish this in the media and uh, the media houses also published that so and so institution had bought for 10 crores 20 crores 25 crores and then the general public also seems to show some interest because there is some investor who is uh, investing a huge amount of money into these stocks okay guys next coming to these things our video is based on subjective thing guys i am not going into any of the 
uh, chit chat things i don't want to chat about the comments i don't want to chat about uh, subscribers or anything on my channel this is purely subject oriented thing and this is available in the public domain so these are the things which uh, you get in a paid training centers so uh, even i am launching my paid courses uh, for the fundamental analysis but uh, this one i am saying it would be enough if you are uh spending some time to read this document and the key points in this document okay so again uh, let's scroll down in this document you have table of contents this is very important over here uh, as i don't want to make a very long uh, video for this ipo analysis i am i'll cut short my content on this video and i'll try to finish it off under 15 minutes so that uh, people who give time and uh, look at into this video it will be very useful to them okay so what we are looking for we need forward looking statements this is uh, the plan of management guys these statements are nothing but the management statements what they are going uh, what they are going to do in the future and how they are taking up the market dynamic challenges or uh, how they are going to address the challenges if any in the market or if any in the sector okay and then <coughs> the section 2 is uh, you can just read it out if you have time otherwise you can jump to section 3 guys section 3 is risk factors risk factors is more important than any other thing in this contents guys risk factor because we are investing in a business you are not investing for buying uh, shares of a particular uh, company it's not a stock which you are buying you are buying a ownership in a business guys so the ownership might be very less compared to the uh, promoter holdings but still you are uh, referred to a owner of this company so when you are buying shares you are investing in the company guys so for when investing in the company you need to always assess what is the risk factors included in this company like what all things uh, the environmental things if it is a agriculture based company uh, if it is a commodity based company like tata steel uh, what is the uh, issue with the imports of steel if there is uh, any issue with the imports of steel or the taxations on the steel import of steel crude steel or other things so what all factors uh, relating to this company and to this sector will be uh, given in this risk factors guys okay and then uh, you have the introduction like general information capital structure if anyone is interested about the capital structure like uh, uh, who who of the promoters or uh, which promoters hold the uh, biggest uh, share in the company and who are all those things you can just check out like capital structure you will find out like who is having the highest capital guys and then coming to the uh, particulars of the issue so you can go through this uh, basis for issue price and other things if you have time but you can go through this statement of uh, special tax tax benefits okay this thing is uh, considered good thing uh, you should go through this uh, thing because if the government is giving any uh, tax benefits to this company in a particular sector then it might be very uh, good time to invest in such companies so we need to go through this thing okay and then coming to the section 6 section 6 it's all about management promoter group and group of companies guys you need to read about dividend policy if you are a investor with uh, near to retiring age or you are looking for a dividend paying uh, uh, equity then <coughs> then you need to uh, check this point as well okay then coming to section 7 in the section 7 it's all about financial information so you need to go through the balance sheet and other things of the uh, of the company and then you need to read this financial indebtedness uh, so this is like unsecured loans what they are taking so if the company has any unsecured loans out of the loans what they had taken from the banks or uh, any other things they will just let you know in this financial indebtedness and then financial information you have all the cash flow uh, profit and loss statement and then balance sheet so you can go through these things guys 
and section uh, 8 again you have legal and other information so outstanding uh, litigation and material developments okay so outstanding litigation is uh, nothing but the court cases which are pending or the FIRs which are pending guys so you can go through this section uh, the page number is 415 here government and other statutory approvals the statutory approvals are not much needed for us but if you are going through you can go through guys and uh, rest of the things it's uh it's okay if you have any uh, thing to do with uh, if you are a foreigner and then you want to see those things then you can read on this content like restrictions on foreign ownership of indian securities all those things and the declaration at that so coming to our main points how many main points we had identified first is forward looking statement i would skip this in this video i am not going through forward looking statements i'll go through risk factors i'll show you how risk factors looks like and then i'll skip the capital structure and then again uh, sorry uh, i don't want to highlight this but it got highlighted so again we will go through some of the information just a minute okay so in section 6 again we have dividend policy that also i would be skipping and then i'll go for 408 and all the financial statements in section 7 so we are going to go through risk factors that is section 3 and section 7 guys so <coughs> section 3 page number here it is 46 and section 7 page number financial information is starting from 311 and financial indebtedness uh, is at 408 so we have around 100 pages over here so we'll just go through uh, just give you an overview like how the analysis is done i am doing this so we will just type in the page number over here this page number might be little different guys because uh, about the table of contents you have five to six pages so pdf doesn't uh, uh, does ID identify those pages also as pages so we need to add those pages the difference so this is 43 44 and 46 you can see this is the 46 page and you have the risk factors section 3 guys okay in section 3 you can see there are certain outstanding litigations adversely may affect our business operations and reputation guys so there are legal proceedings which are at different stages with various courts tribunals and forums so you have the legal proceedings which are pending on this company guys and the brief of all the legal proceedings are given over here by our company this means this company had sued someone else like there are four cases on such thing one is on tax proceedings it's against the government uh, government of india or uh, whichever tax whatever they are paying it's it might be against the state government also so it's against the government one case they had uh, leveled against uh, the government and there are three cases which are against some other people like uh, whoever it might be vendors or uh, clients or anything and then again uh, they got four cases uh, which are uh, against our company so someone had sued them in the court uh, for four times uh, so there are four cases which are still undergoing the process of hearing and then material civil litigations you have around six and then again you have a crime proceeding guys crime proceeding criminal proceeding is very big thing for a company if any of the promoters and all those uh, people are involved in criminal proceedings then you need to uh, take some caution before investing into such stocks guys and uh, if you have uh, the patience uh, then you can read it like they will give you the fir number uh, where it is uh, at which police station is the fir registered and what is what had happened under section what section of ips is uh, is it uh, is the case is uh, registered and all those things you have all the things guys and then 
they had given in the second point our projects are exposed to various implementation and other risk including time and cost over return so time means if they delay their execution process for the clients they need to pay a penalty guys in uh, march 31st 2022 year ending with this uh, 2022 march 31st they paid around 10.78 million uh, rupees as fine because they had delayed their uh, project implementation guys and then you can see in the uh, third point they had given that uh, their business is in Rajasthan so any uh, adverse effect in Rajasthan might cause harm to their business so you can see the total revenue from operations revenue from projects in Rajasthan so out of 100% revenue what they gain they are earning 66% of revenue from Rajasthan guys so this uh, shows you how much dependent they are in the state <coughs> and then uh, again a significant portion of projects executed by us are in water supply uh, project segment focus on WSP uh, segment may expose us to risk associated with business concentration and adversely affect our business financial condition and results of operation so these are the uh, brief things what they are uh, doing guys you can go through each of the risk factors uh, our free operating cash flow to debt ratio as on march 31st 2023 and march 31st 2022 is negative further increase in debt without sustained free cash flow may adversely impact our financial condition and growth of our company you can see guys uh, in the previous videos also i said you whenever you are uh, analyzing a quantitative analysis uh, you need to analyze the cash flow statement and they had given it over here itself where uh, you can see free operating cash flow after working capital charges it's nothing it's negative guys so the company is very poor at making uh, cash uh, cash related transactions they might execute a lot of orders but they are not getting timely payments guys this shows their uh, work uh, their, it's a capital intensive unit if they don't get payments it might affect their complete performance or the operational performance of the company and then they have a contingent liabilities guys these are like in millions of rupees so contingent liabilities again uh, this is uh, towards the legal proceedings what they need to meet uh, these are not the expenses which are met by regular business like uh, in a regular business you don't uh, take this expenditure as a regular business expenditure so they note it under heading called contingent liabilities under contingent liabilities you get all the legal proceeding fees what they are uh, what they had to pay or what they had paid in the company and then again we have uh, not yet placed orders in relation to the capital expenditure to be incurred for the proposed purchase of equipment or machineries so they will give you all the data guys over here it's an uh, overload of data it's like you need to go through each and every point in the risk factor and you will understand what is all happening over here okay and then again we will go into the table of contents guys uh once i go to the table of content and then check for financial statements so financial statements we can go to section uh, 7 financial statements starting from 311 so 311 and then financial indebtedness so if you can go to this page i'll type it as 316 it's five pages forward yeah financial information so uh, yeah, under the financial information you get the independent auditors examination report on st stated uh, restated financial information guys so you need to read the auditors report if they raise any red flags regarding the uh, accounting procedure or practices the company is following guys you will find that information in this area so you need to read this thing uh, if you have any doubts about is the company following proper uh, financial uh, transactions or proper uh, accounting procedures or taking benefit of uh, accounting procedures the auditor will give you a statement like uh, if it is uh, any uh, they if they find some uh, discrepancies uh, within the company they might give a disclaimer certificate like we had uh, taken it but some part of the statements we are not sure about so you can you need to read about this uh, chartered accountants 
opinion guys that would be benefit of you benefit for you and then you have the balance sheet so what we look at we look at profit guys first is profit and loss uh, so profit and loss you can see the loss uh, profit is 906.43 as per the previous video i said you we need more cash flow so it should be about 906 but the cash flow from the operating activities is just 84 guys so you can know that the company is struggling to make cash and they are not getting cash properly into their hands and from past two years they are in negative cash flow means the company needs to run the company with uh, debt funds or uh, they need to go to a bank or play, raise a loan or something like that so this uh, this gives us the perspective guys whether to invest or not it's again to your own understanding like uh, you, if you want to invest you can but uh, please take the investment advisors uh, advice guys and uh, even sebi uh, gives a disclaimer that uh, they are not responsible for uh, any of the financial losses because uh, sebi doesn't give you any guarantee that uh, if they analyze these uh, documents it doesn't mean that it will be a sure shot profit for you once the market opens and they don't give any guarantee on the price at which you are buying the equity guys so you can go through all these things <coughs> you need to have some time and patience guys so i mark the important things at least if you go through the important things you will get the video correctly uh, the main intent of this video is to show you that you will have all the information a normal research analyst in the market would have so if a research analyst is uh, analyzing a stock in ipo this is the information what they have apart from this if they probably have any uh, edge over normal uh, individual investors they visit the company uh, premises they see the company they uh, speak to the directors they take their appointments because the research analysts from asset manage uh, asset management companies they are high uh, high work people like uh, they invest a lot of money into the company so even the company directors and uh, everyone the ceo cfo would give them the appointment and they they take the interview of those guys so if you are not having interview of the management as well uh, rhp will serve you this purpose you can read all the things in this document and then conclude on your decision whether to invest in this company or not if you like this video guys as i said you before uh, please uh, like it please subscribe and comment below thank you thanks a lot